Okay, I normally hate to do this, but I'm gonna make five predictions for the Arizona real estate market. And let me know if you agree with them or not. So my first prediction, and here it is, it's right after Christmas. Congress, as ineffective as they are, they're gonna extend rent relief. They have to. They always do this. They always drag us out to the last minute. Then they have a miracle cure. And, oh, it's midnight and everybody's happy. And they finally pass some meaningless legislation. I don't expect them to change their stripes. Right now, we only have 6,300 homes on the market. This is prediction number two. That's low, but it's been low all year. We always see inventory rise in January. I don't see it happening this year. I predict that the rise in inventory isn't going to occur until spring, maybe late spring. People have got to get over the uh, uh, pandemic jitters, kind of have to shake the dust off a little bit and be more comfortable that, that there's going to be more homes that they can buy because nobody wants to sell right now and not have a place to go. So I think our normal pop in January inventory is now delayed until spring. Prediction number three, prices are going to continue to go up all through 2021 as high as 15%. That's an easy prediction. It's an easy prediction when you look at today's inventory and see that we're probably not going to get any relief in inventory until April or May. The millennials are buying homes like crazy across the country. That's not going to subside. There's a real desire to finally have a home, and that's going to drive prices up. And prices are going to continue to go up until inventory and buyers balance. So right now we have, according to the Cromford Index, where a balanced market is considered 100, we have cities in 600. Well, that's not going to change overnight. So that's going to take most of the year to make an attempt to get to a normal balanced market. Number four, this is one where you'll get a lot of argument. There's not going to be a foreclosure crisis. I don't care what YouTube you're looking at. Arizona, you're not going to see a wave of foreclosures. If every one of the people that are in forbearance took the foreclosure option, that still wouldn't create a, a, a big glut of inventory because there's so much demand right now. And the people that are in forbearance have equity. They're going to try that one first. And if they can't do that one, it's going to be delayed and delayed and delayed. They can't even start foreclosure proceedings until you're 90 days late. And then it takes them months to finally get to where they, you know, take over your house, kick you out of the place, and then finally get around to putting it on the market. It can take up to two years to do that. We saw that in 2008. Rates will stay low in 2021. That's prediction number five. Now, the Federal Reserve says they intend to keep them low all the, way, all the way through 2023. But remember, they don't hold all the cards. Investors do. It's all about treasuries and the bond market and international purchases. It's, it's impossible to be the mathematician or the economist sitting at this desk to tell you where rates are going to go, except all indications are in 2021 that everybody's going to want them to remain the same. They could go even lower if our economic news doesn't increase and things don't get better, the bond market's going to react. And when the bond market goes up, rates go down. If you're a technical trader and you're looking at the bond market, there's very, not very few, there's a whole bunch of indicators that show that the bond market may have a rally. If they have a rally, rates could go down. We're not going to be above 3% all year. So what we need is we need inventory relief so the buyers can have some relief. I submitted a backup offer for a home in Gilbert on Christmas Eve. They already had five backup offers. It's brutal out there. It's impossible to buy a home. It's just brutal. But you run across the occasional listing where you can actually get in on time and get people to accept your offer. So it's not happening at every house because every house has an individual story to tell. So I don't discourage anybody from writing an offer because you never know what the situation is with the sellers. Sometimes it's not just price. They want better closing terms. So don't be afraid to write an offer. Now, if you want to sell a home, selling a home right now is just like falling off a log. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort. You just have to practically stand on your porch and say, for sale. Now, having said that, don't go with those eye buyers. Don't sell your home through Open Door, Offer Pet, or Zillow, because they are going to ding you on fees. If you're looking for a break on fees, 
then talk to your real estate agent and see what kind of a deal he can give you on packages and commissions and what kind of services you would get. But I would not go to them. You're going to go to them because it's a cash buyout and it's convenient, but there's a lot of other options that you can do before you pull that trigger and lose money. So stay close to here because the next couple of weeks are going to be very interesting, folks. Be sure and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I add new content because I want to see if we're going to start getting any inventory next week. I don't think we will, but stay tuned and smash the living daylights. I let like button.